Mr. Beatrice Agutu instead directed us to the sub-county. All right, let's change gears from that conversation and speak about media. Now, the African Women in Media, AWIM, is set to hold a conference this year whose theme is Showcase. The conference will seek to tackle urgent issues facing women in the media in Africa. Our African Women in Media has partnered with the Standard Group Women Network through the Women Network for the conference in 2018. In studio to discuss what AWIM is doing this year, we have Dr. Yemisi Akin Bobola who is a joint winner of the CNN African Journalist Award 2016. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on News Center today. Good morning. Um, let's talk a little more about African women in the media. It is a movement you began back in 2016. Yes. What informed that? Yes, so um, I had been running my news website, IQ for News, for four years between 2010 and 2014. Right. And, you know, it got to a point where with the organization, it was profitable but not enough to be innovative. Right? So I personally was getting to a point in my career as a media entrepreneur thinking about what's the next step. Right? How do I step it up from the achievement I already made? So in 2016, um, I was shortlisted for the CNN African Journalist Award. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, at that time, I was thinking more about how to become more innovative in the media industry as a woman in, this, in the mm -hmm. space and also reflecting on my experiences as a media entrepreneur. And so I looked for a network to support me through that process. And there wasn't any. So initially it was just a Facebook group and um, I didn't really do much with it until we won the, I won the CNN award right. um, and during that forum there was a lot of discussion about women in media and people were asking well how are we supporting African women working in media, how are we getting together, how do we know each other. So it was coincidental that I already started a Facebook group um, and so from that forum I then decided to promote um, AWIM further inviting winners of the CNN African Journalist Award that year to the group and so in 2017 we had our first event right. so that was in Birmingham UK because I was heavily pregnant with my second child then uh -huh. um, and it was supposed to be just a small event 30 people in a symposium just having a conversation trying to identify what the issues are um, but people wanted more Right? So the feedback was really positive, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they wanted a bigger conference, they wanted a multi-day conference and they wanted workshops and they wanted to also not just talk about the gender issues but the issues in media, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. To skill up, right? To have opportunities for networking and to connect with leading voices in the media industry. Right. So that was 2017, so 2018 we did a much bigger conference. Mm -hmm. which was, was the second conference now in yeah, 2018. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So that one was in Nigeria. Um, and we had on the day about 300 people for that conference is much you know different scale to the one we did in right, Birmingham right. and it was a two-day event with workshops with panels and we partnered with quite a few organizations we were very lucky to get the support of Ford Foundation who supported it, a lot of women to attend the event as well. Right. Well, what are the impact of you know the 2017 and 2018 conference been? Well, so I can give you some very specific examples. So I'll compare who at that time was still trying to make her way into the media. Following the conference, she actually got a show on radio wow. in Lagos, you know. And we had a PhD student whose PhD was around maternal communication. So she was invited on a film production team as a consultant. So a lot of jobs have come out of people who come to the conference. So that's the kind of direct impact in terms of economic empowerment of women. Um, but then also in terms of not just talking about the issues because we are aware of the issues and we should continue to raise right. Aware, right. Uh, awareness around issues affecting women in media. But then we need to also do something about it, you know, put things in action. And and so I think for a lot of people that attended the 2018 event, it was that opportunity to network. And quite a few women have gone on to set up their own conferences, which I'm really pleased about, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just supporting everybody to develop themselves within their space, to do something, to feel able to do something about the challenges that they face in their workplaces. But then also to kind of commit to that idea of me as a female producer of media, how am I changing the narrative? in media content. How am I changing the narrative around domestic violence, mm -hmm, for example, mm -hmm. in media content? So there's two sides to it. There's empowering the women that work within the media industry, but also challenging 
um, the normative narratives, the negative narratives in the media around women issues. Absolutely. And I mean, you, you did quite a bit with your website, you know, through that, talking about Nigeria, Nigeria's rape culture, um, issues of, uh, what is it, human trafficking or sex trafficking, you know, issues really that affect society. But let's talk about the 2019 theme for Africa, um, African women in media. And the theme there is showcase. Yeah. What inspired this theme? Okay, well, last year, our theme was visibility, right? Mm -hmm. So visibility of women within media content. This, this year is about showcasing African women in media as the experts in the issues that affect them, us in the media. Because we are, we are, we are the experts in the issues that <laughs> affect us. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly. So, and the conference is, is very important to know that the conference, while it tackles the gender discussions, and we have panels around gender gaps in the media, for example, it also tackles the media topics mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So you have a panel on global innovations in media, we have panels on misinformation and fake news, right? We have panels on violence and policy making and public sphere in the media. So it's about also presenting these women as the experts on these media topics, mm -hmm. because that's one of the challenges within media content in terms of how women are represented in media content is often the experts, the sources, the fox pops that you use on some of these topical issues in our society are often mo most predominantly men, you know, but there are female experts as well that we can draw on on some of these issues. So Absolutely. showcase in terms of showcasing us as the experts as well as showcasing the challenges around gender rights within media content and media industry. Yeah, and I remember, I mean, uh, when I started my career myself, um, I'd have many viewers asking, why do you always interview pan a panel of men? You know, there, there's never a woman expert on anything financial, anything, you know, security-wise. So many call them manals instead of panels. But, yeah. you know, that, that is quickly beginning to change. Um, but let's talk about some of the objectives, really, for the Africa Women in Media um, 2019. Uh, and you say these are in line with at least the African Union's Agenda 2063 Aspirations 3 and 6. And let us take a look at uh, those aspirations. Aspiration 3 talks about an Africa of good governance, democracy, respect for human rights, justice, and the rule of law. Yeah. Um, talk to us about how women in media can really showcase their work in this front. Okay. Well, so in terms of how the inform the narrative, challenging the narrative, changing the narrative around these issues within Africa, we were sad to lose Holden Nalea, um, recently right. the founder of Inspiration TV. And she was an example of an African Indian diaspora. She lived in Canada who came to Africa so that she can contribute to challenging and changing the narrative that we often hear about Somalia. So again, around these issues, Africa is often misrepresented in terms of how we're tackling human rights and mm -hmm. things like that. So how are we demonstrating that we are making some um, way forward? And when we talk about human rights, well, that also includes gender rights, right? U women rights, right? Mm -hmm. So again, within that context, we're talking about the rights of women and how we are challenging the, the, um, the issues. Right? And the opportunities are presented to us as media experts. How are we being gender cautious in the way we write about these issues? All right, absolutely. Um, um, aspiration number six, an Africa whose development is people-driven, relying on the potential offered by African people, especially its women and its youth. Again, falling right back into the role of women in society. Yeah. And, in the media. and it's all about voices, right? Whose voices have been heard in these agendas, right? Who's, who's, whose voices have been contributed to developing the agendas? Mm -hmm. Whose voices have been heard in terms of what the agendas should how the agenda should be set and what are the important issues. Right. Right. And assuring that women's voices are also there. Often, for example, when we have female politicians or a female presidential as uh, candidate, mm -hmm. what question do they ask her? How are you going to manage family, family and, and, <laughs> and your responsibilities <laughs> as a president? Uh -huh. You don't ask a man that question. Uh -huh. How, why not just focus on her skill, her professional background, her ability to function as a president? Right, and um, we, I'm recently in conversation with Wikimedia because one of the things we found was that out of, for example, you know, we got I don't know 50 million Nigerian women in Nigeria, for mm -hmm. example, and um, there's only 1,500 profiles of Nigerian women on Wikimedia. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Out of that 1,500, only 20% have an image attached to them. Now, Wikimedia is really important in the journalistic narrative mm -hmm. because the contributors to Wikimedia get the secondary, secondary data from journalism. Right. So, 
So that's why it's important that when we're writing about women and women generally within media content, that we're actually doing more in-depth reporting about who that person is, mm -hmm. right? We're not asking them silly questions about managing, you know, no, your babies private life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How many babies do you have? Exactly. You... But we want to know who these women are. Who is the woman behind the success? So, and that contributes to visibility. Absolutely. Right, to increase in the profile of women on platforms like Wikimedia, etc. Inequalities um, come up very high on that list. Uh, let's talk about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, you know, goal 10, reducing inequality. Goal number 5, ensuring um, gender equality and empowering all women and girls uh, by 2030. Again, um, the issue of empowering women and girls is not just a women's issue, but women in journalism are more fronted, are more positioned to tell the stories. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about what is likely to come out of this conference this year? Well, I'm hoping from this conference we have um, we, we have we're going to have a set of actions an agenda that's agreed with participants of the conference in terms of what we're going to do as an organisation, but also we'll be asking the organisations represented at the media, like Standard Media Group, to actually um, to actually set an agenda for themselves over the next 12 months of how they're going to change the narrative and how they're going to be more gender cautious, how they going to improve the working conditions for their female journalists, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and how they're going to improve their content so that there's, there's less gender bias, there's more gender neutral um, language use, less less presenting women as pretty, mm -hmm. <laughs> and kind of, you know, focusing on the uh, profession. The, 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 the I, profession I, I, I think we've come a really long way. I mean, when I watch TV in my days, you'd rarely ever see a pregnant woman um, on TV, reading the news, doing interviews. Um, you talk about the Standard Group Women's Network, and they've done quite a lot really for women um, you know recently we got a fully fitted lactation room and you know it is issues like this and you know moving towards supporting m more women like this in the workplace that makes this job possible but how how would you rate um, you know the level of support that women are getting in this industry as we speak I think that we've come a long way and we've achieved a lot like you said standard media supporting the women's network and that's amazing ten years ago would that have happened right so i think a lot of organizations are beginning to recognize that they cannot ignore 50 percent of the population mm -hmm. right so i think we're, we're, we are making headway and it's to not stop the conversation just because we've taken a few steps forward right. but to actually set agendas and action points that we can commit to and we can to demonstrate the impact. All right, so this is a conference that began from nowhere in 2016. 300 people in the conference in 2018. How many are you expecting this year? Where is it going to be? Who will be in attendance? Well, I'm quite happy with the number two, 300, so we're going to stick with that. Right. <laughs> um, but this year we've got 100 speakers. Right, speakers, trainers, we've got our pitch zone, um, which is this year has been sponsored by the German Development Agency mm -hmm. and the International um, Organization for Migration. So attendees will be able to pitch and their story ideas to these organizations in order to win $2,000 towards producing a story. And mm -hmm. um, we also have organizations like CNN, BBC, Voice of America, who are there to commission stories that they like from people that pitch to them. Mm -hmm. um, so. In terms of uh, the numbers, 300 is quite a good size. I think it's enough for us to create conversations, to build a network. And like I said, we're going to have 100 speakers and trainers. So we're going to have workshops and um, panels. And our keynotes this year um, are a combination of media, academia, and community engagement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's uh, quite a lot. Absolutely. To so, so finally, you know, when, when we're speaking, you mentioned um, the image that uh, Africa has outside Africa isn't really what is reciprocated on the ground. Uh, but what impact has there been from the stories showcased, even from the African um, women in the media conferences? Have these stories had impact in changing what is happening in society? Well, I think it's one of those things that can never be there can never be an end point, right? Mm -hmm. So impact has to be continued to be measured, and we need to really think about what we mean by impact, right? What is what is it that we're trying to achieve, and how therefore should we be measuring that? All right. So I think this we're making headway, and um, there's people like Holden who are contributing, challenging the narratives, mm -hmm. and we just need to continue to do that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for speaking to us. That is uh, Dr. Emisi Akin Bobola. She is an award-winning journalist and a
co-founder of the African Women in Media, which has partnered with the Standard Group Women's Network for the African Women in Media 2019, whose theme is Showcase. Thank you for speaking to us on News Center today. Now, to take a short break on News Center, but a quick reminder of the top story you're following for you this morning, and that is that a group of senators have marched up to the Milimani Court this morning to 